Unit 1. Taking a History 1. Task 1. Good morning, Mr Hall. What's brought you along today? Uh, well, you see, Doctor, I've been having these headaches, you see, and... Uh-huh. And how long have they been bothering you? Uh, well, they started about... Well, it must have been about three months ago. I see. And which part of your head is affected? Well, it's it's right across the front here. Hmm. And can you describe the pain? Um, it, it's a sort of dull, uh, dull and throbbing kind of pain. I see. And do they come on at any particular time? Uh, they seem to be. They're usually worse in the morning. I, I notice them when I wake up. Hmm. <clears throat> And is there anything that makes them better? Well, if I lie down for a while, they seem to get... they uh, go away. Yes. And has there been anything else apart from these headaches? Well, the wife, my wife, she says that I seem to be getting a bit deaf. Hmm. Well, Mr Hall, I think at this stage I'll start by checking your ears to see if there's any wax in them. Unit 1. Task 8. Come in, Mr Green. Yeah. Come and sit down here. <clears throat> um, I've had a letter from your doctor and she tells me that you've been having pain, pain yeah. in your chest. Uh, yes, and in my arm, and also uh, tingling in my fingers. And, mm, uh, yes. I... um, now, when did you first notice this pain? Uh, well, I suppose about six months ago. Mm, and... Can you remember when it first came on? Uh, yes, well, I remember I, I, I got a bad pain in my chest when I was shopping. Oh. It, it was so bad I couldn't breathe. And uh, um, Where? In which well, part of your chest uh, did you feel the pain? Well, well, right across my chest. And how long did it last? Ooh, about ten minutes. And uh, what did you do when it happened? Well, I had to stop and wait for it to go away. So, have you had this, the, the pain, again since then? Y yes, yeah, I, I often get it um, when, when I overdo things and... Uh, well, when well I... I think at this stage I'd like to examine you, your chest, so if you could strip to your waist. Right. There we are. That's fine. Uh, fine, I'll, I'll just check your pulse first of all. Fine. That's fine. It's quite normal. 70 per minute. Ah, right. Now your blood pressure. Fine. That's quite normal too. 130 over 80. Oh, I'm pleased to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to listen to your heart. So I want you to breathe normally. Mm, your heart sounds quite normal. Well, hell, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I want you to take deep breaths in and out while I check your lungs. In, out, in, out. Fine, they're completely clear. Well, Mr Green, uh, the pain you've been having sounds very much like the pain of what we call angina. Ah. And this, uh, well, this occurs when not enough oxygen is getting to the heart. Mm. Now, I'd like to check a few tests, and uh, following that, I'll be able to advise some treatment for you. Unit 1. Task 12. Ah, good morning, Mr Hudson. I see from your card that you've just moved into the area. And perhaps you could tell me a little about your previous health, as I won't get your records for another month, a month or two, um, and then we can deal with your present problem. Uh, well, <clears throat> I've actually... Uh, I've always been very fit up till now, but... Um, Have you ever been in hospital? Oh, only when I was a child. Uh, I had an appendicitis when I was eight. Uh-huh. And what's your job? What do you do? Well, I'm a... I work for the post office. I'm a postmaster. Mm hmm And I see that you're... 
what, uh, 58 now. And have you... Yes. Have you always been with the post office? Uh, yes. Uh, well, apart from my time in the army, you know. Mm, I see. And you're married? Any family? Yes, two girls and a boy. Fine. That's fine. Now, can you tell me what seems to be the problem today? Well, it's this terrible pain. I've got this terrible pain in my back. I've had it for more than a week now, and it's... I see. And can you show me exactly where it is? Um, it's down here. Here. Mm. And does it go anywhere else? Yes, it goes down my left leg, and I feel pins and needles in my foot. I see. And is it there all the time? Yes, yes, it is. It's keeping me awake. <laughs> awake at night, and I can't get out into the garden. I've been taking aspirins, but the pain, it just comes back again. Mm. And was there anything that started it off? Well, yes, yes I've been uh, trying to sort out the garden of a new house, and I don't know, I'm, I may have been overdoing things a bit. Unit 2. Taking a History 2. Tasks 1 and 2. Now, Mrs. Brown, can you tell me, have you any trouble with your stomach or bowels? Well, I sometimes get a bit of indigestion. Oh, I see. And uh, could you tell me more about that? Well, um, it only comes on if I have a hot... something spicy, you know, like a, a curry. I see. Well, that's quite normal, really. And what's your appetite like? Not bad. And any problems with your waterworks? No, they're, they're all right. And are you still having your periods regularly? No, they stopped. Must have been five years ago. Hmm. Uh, any pain in the chest, uh, any palpitation, or swelling of the ankles? Not really, Doctor. And what about coughs or wheezing or shortness of breath? Hmm... Only when I've got a cold. Mm. Have you noticed any weakness or tingling in your limbs? No. No, I can't say that I have, really. What sort of mood have you been in recently? I've been feeling a bit down. You know, I'm not sleeping well. Unit 2. Tasks 5 and 6. And language focus 5. And how long... how long have you had this temperature? Oh, uh, I don't know exactly. About two months on and off. And does... is the temperature there all the time, or does it come on at any particular time? Well, sometimes I'm all right during the day, but uh, I wake up at night and I'm drenched in sweat. Drenched and... Sometimes my whole body shakes and... Uh, and how have you been feeling in general? Well, I don't know. I've been feeling a bit tired. A bit tired and weak and I, I just don't seem to have any energy. And have you noticed any... Um, any pain in your muscles? Uh, yes. Well, actually, I have a bit, yes. And what about your weight? Uh, have you lost any weight? Yes, yes, I have. About a stone. I see. And... Um... What about your appetite? What's your appetite been like? Well, I've really been off my food this last while. I just haven't felt like eating. Hmm. And have you had a cough at all? Oh, yes, I have. Nearly all the time. I, I sometimes bring up a lot of phlegm. And is there... Have you noticed any blood in it? No, not always, but... Uh, yes, sometimes. Have you had any pains in your chest? Only if I take a deep breath. Unit 2. Tasks 15 and 16. Hello, Jim. I wonder if you could see a patient for me. Certainly, John. What's the story? 
Well, it's a Mr. Alan Jameson, a 53-year-old carpenter. He's been an infrequent attender in the past, but he came to see me this morning complaining of pain in his right leg and in his back. Hmm. And when did this start? Well, it came on about six weeks ago, and it's become gradually more severe over the past couple of weeks. Was the pain localised? No, poorly. At first, he thought he'd just pulled a muscle, but it's got so bad that he hasn't been able to do his work properly. It's also been getting to the stage where the pain is waking him up at night. It's been so severe. And he's also noticed some tingling in his right foot. He's having difficulty in carrying on with his work. He's also lost three kilos and has become quite depressed. Has he had anything similar in the past? No, not exactly, but he has suffered from intermittent pain in back. Paracetamol gave some relief, but didn't solve the problem completely. Apart from that, any other problems with health in the past? No, perfectly OK. Did you find anything else on examination? Yes, as well as the pain, he has numbness in his toes on the right foot. Unit 2. Tasks 19 and 20. Good afternoon, Mr Hudson. Just have a seat. Hmm. I haven't seen you for a good long time. What's brought you along here today? Well, Doctor, uh, I've been having these headaches and um, I seem to have lost some weight and... I see. And how long have these headaches been bothering you? Well, um, I don't know, for quite a while now. The wife passed away, you know, about four months ago, and I've been feeling down since then. Hmm. And which part of your head is affected? Uh, just here, just here on the top. It feels as if there were something heavy, a heavy weight pressing down on me. I see. And have they affected your vision at all? No, no, I wouldn't say so. Not even seeing lights or black spots? No, nothing like that. And they haven't made you feel sick at all? No. Mm. Now, you told me that you've lost some weight. What's your appetite been like? Well, actually, I haven't really been feeling like eating. Um, I've really been off my food for the moment. And, and uh, what about your bowels? Any problems? No, no, they're well, I'm quite all right, no problems. Mm -hmm. And what about your waterworks? Well, uh, I've been having trouble getting started and I have to... I seem to have to get up during the night, <laughs> um, two or three times at night. And has this come on recently? Well, no, not exactly. I think I've noticed it gradually over the past, ooh, the past few months. And do you get any pain when you're passing water? No, no. And have you noticed any blood? Any traces of blood? No, no, I can't say that I have. Unit 3. Examining a patient. Task 1. Would you slip off your top things, please? Now, I just want to see you standing, hands by your side. Oh, you're sticking that hip out a little bit, aren't you? Yes. Uh, well, I can't straighten off easily. Could you bend down as far as you can with your knees straight and <sighs> stop when you've had enough? Oh, that's the limit. Not very far, is it? Well, stand up again. <sighs> now, I would like you to lean backwards. <sighs> That's not much either. Now, stand up straight again. Now, first of all, I would like you to slide your right hand down the right side of your thigh. See how far you can go? Ah. Uh. That's fine. Now, do the same thing on the opposite side. Mm. Fine. Now, just come back to standing straight. Now, keep your feet together just as they are. Keep your knees firm. Now, try and turn both shoulders round to the right. Look right round. Uh, Keep your knees and feet steady. Oh, that's sore. Go back to the centre again. Mm. Now try the same thing and go round to the left side. 
Fine. Mm. Now back to the centre. That's fine. Now, would you like to get onto the couch and lie on your face? I'm just going to try and find out where the sore spot is. <sighs> Unit 3. Tasks 2 and 3. Would you like to lie down here on the couch? On your back? OK. I'm going to test your reflexes by tapping you with this little hammer. It won't hurt you. Let me hold your right arm. I let it go quite relaxed. Try not to tighten up. There. Now the other one. Just let me have your wrist. Let it go quite floppy. That's right. I'm going to tap your elbow. Fine. Now the left one. OK? Fine. I'll just give you a little tap here on the wrist. Now the other one. Now let your legs go completely relaxed. I'll hold them up with my hand. There. I'm just going to turn your leg out to the side for a moment. Just relax. That's it. Now the other one. Fine. Unit 3. Task 4. 1. Firstly, I'd like you to kneel on that straight back chair so that your feet are just slightly hanging over the edge. That's right. Now I'm going to tap them behind your heel with this hammer. This is just a method of testing for your ankle jerk. That's fine. Two. Now I'd like you to sit with your legs just dangling over the edge of the couch so that I can test your knee jerks. Now nothing very much is happening here, so what I'd like you to do is to clasp your hands together with the fingers and try to pull your fingers apart. Pull as hard as you can and concentrate on pulling. That's fine. That makes it a lot easier to produce your knee jerk. Three. Now, finally, I want you to lie down on the bed with your legs stretched out in front of you. Now I'm going to place my hand on your knee, and with this key I'm going to stroke the sole of your foot to see which way your big toe will turn. This is called the plantar reflex. You shouldn't find it painful, although it may tickle a little. Fine. Now I'll check the other foot. Very good. That's your reflexes all finished now. Thank you. Unit 3. Task 5. Would you like to get onto the couch and lie on your back, please? <clears throat> now, I'm going to take your left leg and see how far we can raise it. Keep the knee straight. Does that hurt at all? Yes, just a little. Just slightly. Can I do the same with this leg? Mm. How far will this one go? Mm. Well, not very far. Now, let's see what happens if I bend your toes back. Oh, that's worse. I'm going to bend your knee. How does that feel? A little better. Now, let's see what happens when we straighten your leg again. Uh, that's sore. I'm just going to press behind your knee. Oh, no, that hurts a lot. Where does it hurt? In my back. Right. Now, would you roll over onto your tummy, bend your right knee? Mm. How does that feel? Mm. It's a little bit sore. Now I'm going to lift your thigh off the couch. Ah, uh, that really hurts. Unit 3. Task 6 and Language Focus 7. Now, Mr. McLeod, I know you're in some pain, but there are a few things I'll have to check. Um, I'll be as quick as I can. I'll just take your pulse. 
Mm-hmm. Now the other side. Hmm. Okay. Now your blood pressure. You've had that done before. I'm going to check the other side too. Oh. Once more. <laughs> hmm, fine. Now I want to listen to your heart. Just breathe normally. Uh huh. Could you sit up a little? I just want to check your lungs. Uh, right, Doctor. That's it. Now I'd like you to take big breaths in and out through your mouth. Okay. You can lie down again. Oh, it's bad. I'll be quick. I'll just take a look at your stomach. Take deep breaths in and out. Mm hmm. Now I'm going to check the pulses in your groins too. We'll just roll your pajama trousers down. That's it. We're finished now. Um. Well, Mr. McLeod, I think you've got some trouble with one of your arteries because of your high blood pressure. I'll give you an injection to relieve the pain and arrange for you to go into hospital for further tests. Unit 3. Task 10. How are you, Mrs. Wallace? I'm fine. Have you brought your urine sample? Yes, here it is. I'll just check it. Fine. Just slip off your coat. Right. Hmm. Urine is all clear. Now, if you'd like to lie down on the couch, I'll take a look at the baby. I'll just measure to see what height it is. Right. The baby seems slightly small. How do you know that? I measure from the top of your womb to your pubic bone. The number of centimetres is roughly equal to the number of weeks you're pregnant. In your case, it's 29 centimetres, but you're 32 weeks pregnant. Why do you think the baby's small? Mm, it might be because your dates are wrong. Mm, remember, you weren't sure of your last period. Mm. The best thing would be to have another scan done. I'll make an appointment for you next week. Which way round is the baby lying? The baby's in the right position. It's coming head first. Now, I'm going to listen for the baby's heartbeat. That's fine. Can you hear it? It's quite ah. clear. Have you noticed any swelling of your ankles? Not really. Let's have a quick look. No, they seem to be all right. Now, would you like to sit up and I'll take your blood pressure? Right. That's quite normal. Now, I'll take a sample of blood to check your haemoglobin. Mm -hmm. Fine. You can get your shoes and coat on again now. Unit 3. Task 13. I'll just check a few things to see if we can get to the bottom of these problems. First of all, I'll check your pulse and then I'll do your blood pressure. I'd like you to take off your jacket and roll up your sleeve. Uh, how is it, Doctor? It's just a little above normal, but that doesn't mean too much. If you'd like to roll up your shirt, I'm going to check your heart and lungs. Now, just breathe normally. Good. Now I'd like you to take deep breaths in and out through your mouth. That's fine. Now, if you'd like to lie down on the couch, I'll examine your stomach. Uh, right. -o. Take a deep breath in and out. And again. Uh -huh. Now, I'll just see if there's any sign of a hernia. Could you slip your trousers down? That's fine. Give a cough, please. <coughs> again, please. <coughs> mm. Now, because you've been having trouble with your waterworks, I'd like to examine your back passage. If you'd roll over onto your left side and bend your knees up, um, 
You might find this a bit uncomfortable, but it won't take long. That's it. All finished. You can get your clothes on now. Unit 4. Special Examinations. Tasks 1, 2 and 3. Good afternoon, Mr Priestley. Come in and have a seat. Good afternoon, Mr Davidson. Now, I've had a letter from your doctor saying that you've been having problems with your sight. Yes, that's right, Doctor. Could you tell me how long the left eye has been bad for? Oh, going on for about a year now, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? I'm a postman. I deliver letters and that sort of thing. How is your work being affected? Oh, it's really bad. I can hardly see the letters, let alone the addresses. I have to get my mates to do that sort of thing for me. And it's getting to a stage where I just can't cope, really. I see, yes. I'd just like to examine your eyes, and perhaps we could start with the chart. Could you just look at the chart for me? Can you see any letters at all? No, nothing. OK. Well, with the right eye, can you see anything? Uh, N H T A. That's about all, I'm afraid. Mm. Now, does that make any difference? No. No, nothing. What about that one? Does that have any effect? Not really. I can't really say it does. Right. OK. Thank you very much indeed. Unit 4. Tasks 7 and 8. Now, Debbie, can I have a look at you to find out where your bad cough is coming from? Would you like to stay sitting on Mum's knee? That's fine. Now let's ask Mum to take off your jumper and blouse. You'll not be cold in here. Now I'm going to put this thing on your chest. It's called a stethoscope. It might be a bit cold. I'll warm it up. Feel the end there, OK? First of all, I listen to your front and then your back. She's had that done lots of times by Dr Stewart. Good. Well done. You didn't move at all. Now I'd like to see your tummy, so will you lie on the bed for a minute? Will I guess what's in your tummy this morning? I bet it's Rice Krispies. Now, while you're lying there, I'll feel your neck and under your arms. Are you tickly? Now the top of your legs. That's all very quick, isn't it? Mrs Thompson, could Debbie sit on your knee again? I'd like you to hold her there while I examine her ears and throat. Right, Debbie. Here's a little light to look in your ears. This will tickle a bit, but won't be sore. Good girl. What a nice ear. Now let's see the other one. Now nearly the last bit. Open your mouth. Let me see your teeth. Now open it as wide as you can. Good. I wonder how tall you are, Debbie. Could you come and stand over here and I'll measure you? Stand straight. That's fine. Have you ever been on a weighing machine? Just stand up here and we'll see how heavy you are. Well, we're all finished now. You've been very good. I'll have a talk with your mum and you can play with the toys for a minute. Unit 4. Task 9. 5. Foot. We'll just ask Mummy to take off your shoes and socks so I can have a quick look at your feet. It might be tickly, but it won't be sore. 6. Nasal passage. Can you sit on Mummy's knee? I'm going to have a look at your nose with this little light. You won't feel anything at all. Can you put your head back to help me? Unit 4. 
tasks 11, 12, 13 and 14. Hello, Mr Walters. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine. Very well, thank you. You know who I am, don't you? No. Let me see now. I know your face, but I, I can't quite place who you are. Hmm. I think I know. I think I sh should know who you are. Well, that's right. I'm Dr Williams. I've met you several times before, you know. Oh, you're the doctor. <laughs> well, I remember old Dr Horsborough quite well. Hmm. I remember when he had a surgery down in the old Kirkgate. But uh, I don't remember seeing him recently. No, no. Dr horsborough has been retired for a good number of years now. Oh. I took over his practice and I've seen you before. Maybe you don't recall that. Have you been here long? Where? Where do you mean? In this house. Have you been here long? Oh, I've been here some time, I think. Do you remember where this is? Where is this place? Uh, this will be the High Street, isn't it? Yes, this is the High Street. How long have you been living in the High Street? Oh, it must be a good number of years now. I, My mother used to stay down in North High Street, of course, and I used to stay with her. But when I got married, I moved up here. Oh, that must be a good number of years. I can't quite remember the time. Do you remember when you were born? What was the year of your birth? Can you remember that? Oh, yes. I, I was born in 1913. Ah. What month were you born in? Do you remember that? Oh, yes. I'm an April baby. I, I was always an April baby. <laughs> not an April fool. <laughs> not the first of April, you know. <laughs> Do you remember what time of the month? What was the date? Oh, it was the uh, 17th of April. Well, how old will you be now, do you think? Oh, well, I've retired now. I must be about 69, I think. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll be about 69. Well, there's no doubt the years go by. What year is it this year? Do you know that? Well, this will be about... Uh, 1989 now, I suppose. Fine. And what month are we in? Oh, now let me see. It'll be uh, the... Uh, oh, I can't, uh, can't remember, Doctor. Well, tell me, is it summer or winter? Oh, well, I suppose it's so cold it must be the winter time. It'll be um, January, is that right? Well, actually, it's February now. But it feels as though it was January, doesn't it? Do you remember what day of the week it is? Or do the days not mean a great deal to you now that you're not working? Oh, you're right. The days seem to run into each other. But uh, this'll be Tuesday, I think. No, no, it'll be Wednesday, isn't it? Well, I suppose that Wednesday or Thursday, one day tends to become much the same as the other when we're not working. Isn't that right? Oh, you're right there. Unit 4, Task 16 and Language Focus 11. Part 1. I now want to test how well you can feel things on the skin. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and say yes each time you feel me touching the skin of your legs with this small piece of cotton wool. Uh -huh. I'll touch the back of your hand with it now. Do you feel that? Yes, Doctor. Well, every time you feel me touch your legs, say yes. Fine. Part two. Well, that was quite easy, wasn't it? Now, I'm going to try something a little different. Mm -hmm. I have this sharp needle with this blunt end. Mm -hmm. I want you to say sharp or blunt each time you feel me touch. Mm -hmm. Part three. The other sensation I want to test is whether you feel this tube hot or this other tube which is cold. Mm -hmm. 
Remember, I want you to keep your eyes closed, and each time I touch the skin of your legs, I want you to tell me whether it's hot or cold. All right. Part four. Next, I'm going to test you with this vibrating fork. I'm going to press it on the ankle bone, and I want you to tell me whether you feel it vibrating, and if you do, to say stop when you feel it's stopped. Uh -huh. Unit 4, Task 18, Part 5. I'm now going to test the pulses in your legs. First, we'll press on the blood vessel here in the groin, mm. and now behind the knee. Mm. Could you bend it a little for me? Mm. Sorry. And here, behind the ankle bone. Uh. And now at the top of the foot, and now the other leg. Mm. Unit 5. Investigations. Task 2. Now, I'm going to take some fluid off your back to find out what's giving you these headaches. Mm -hmm. A nurse will help me. It won't take very long. Now, I want you to move right to the edge of the bed. Oh. That's it. Right. Lie on your left side. Great. Now, can you bend both your knees up as far as they'll go? Mm-hmm. That's great. I'll just put a pillow between your knees to keep you comfortable. There you go. Put your head right down to meet your knees. Right. Curl up. Now, I'm going to wipe your back with some antiseptic. You'll feel it a bit cold, I'm afraid. And now I'm going to give you a local anaesthetic so it won't be sore. You'll feel just a slight jab, OK? Mm. There. We'll wait for a few minutes for that to take effect. <clears throat> right now, lie still. That's very important. Unit 5. Task 4. 1. ECG. Your pulse is a bit irregular. I'm not quite certain why this is, but I think we'll have to get a tracing of your heartbeat. I want you to slip down to the waist and also take off your shoes and socks. First of all, this is a completely painless procedure. Are you quite comfortable? It's better if you're as relaxed as possible before I start to take the cardiograph. It only takes a few minutes to do the actual test, but it takes a bit longer to get you wired up. I'm just putting some cream on your wrists and ankles. That's everything ready. Now just relax as much as you can. 2. Barium meal. Good morning, Miss Jones. This test is to help me get a picture of the inside of your gullet and your stomach so that we can find out what's causing you these pains there. I want you just to stand here while I give you a cup of liquid to drink. This liquid will show up after you've drunk it and will be able to tell me if you have an ulcer in your stomach or duodenum. I'd like you to drink the liquid now, and I'll be taking pictures of it as it goes down. That's fine. Thank you. 3. Crosby Capsule Now, I'm just going to give you a little jab to help your tummy relax. Just a little prick. OK? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Good girl. Now, I want you to open your mouth for me so that I can pass this little tube down into your tummy. Right. That's fine. Good girl. Nothing to worry about. Head back a little. That's fine. Now, can you swallow for me? And again. Good girl. Now, I want you to try and keep as still as possible. 4. Ultrasound scan. I'd like you to lie down on this table here. Mm. This gel helps mm. to get a contact so that the picture is clear. We'll just rub in the gel a little bit. 
Mm. And now I'll put on the equipment. Try to keep as still as you possibly can. Okay. That's good. Now, if you turn your head to the left, you'll be able to see the scan as I'm taking it. Oh. As you see, it's just like a television picture. Mm -hmm. This black part here is the baby's head, and this is the body. <laughs> as you can see, it's moving around very well. Mm, yes. These dots allow me to measure the baby so we can work out when your baby is due. That's everything finished now. Mm. 5. Mylogram We're going to put a little needle in your back. We'll inject some fluid in, put you onto the table there, and take some x-ray pictures. These will help us to know exactly where the trouble is. Now roll onto your left side. That's it. I want you to roll up into a little ball to bring your knees up and tuck your head down. That's fine. Now I'm going to swab your back. You'll feel it a bit cold. Now you'll feel me pressing on your back. All right? Scratch coming up now. Now you'll feel me pressing in. OK, that's fine. I'm just injecting the stuff in. You shouldn't feel it at all. That's it. OK. I'll just take the needle out now. Now just straighten out gently and lie on your front. We'll take the pictures now. Unit 5. Task 5. An ECG is essential because it will show any changes in the heart. Axis, ischemia, left ventricular hypertrophy. I think a, a chest x-ray is also very important to see the heart and the extent of the hypertrophy. I would also check the creatinine to see if there's any damage to the kidneys. An intravenous pilogram is essential because a renal cause is very likely. As an initial investigation? No, after urea and electrolytes and after the creatinine. It's essential if the creatinine shows something wrong with the kidneys. Yes. Yes, both creatinine and urea and electrolytes are required. In this case, I think they're more important than the ECG and chest X-ray because the patient is young, 43, and the hypertension is very high. Urinalysis, too, in this case. It's very important. Yes, it, it's routine. We can see if there's any glomerular damage. We may find blood, albumin, casts. Yes, it's very important. Um, what about radioisotope studies of the kidneys? Not essential, but we could do this to check the function of the kidneys. We can see that from the creatinine and urine. Mm, I know. Mm, it's not essential, but it could be useful. Oh. Uh, serum cholesterol? Not essential. We're thinking of another type of hypertension here, but possibly useful. MRI scan of the brain? Not required. It's of no value in this case. Oh. Um, serum thyroxine? Absolutely no connection with hypertension. Um, a barium meal? Not required. Uric acid? Not necessary. If the uric acid is raised, there would be other symptoms. Unit 5, Task 7. 1. Mr Gumley. Mr. Gumley, you'll have to have some investigations done to find out exactly what's causing your problem. Firstly, we need to get your chest x-rayed. Then for three mornings running, I'd like you to bring to the surgery a sample of the phlegm that you cough up in the morning. We'll be sending that off to the lab for testing to see if you have any particular germs present. Following that, it'll be necessary for you to have a bronchoscopy done. This is an investigation which involves looking down into your lungs through a tube. We'll have to admit you to hospital for the day to do it. It's not a particularly pleasant investigation, but you'll be given an anaesthetic spray before the tube is passed down into your lungs. Usually it doesn't take more than a few minutes, 
but it may last longer if they need to take samples of the tissue in your lungs, maybe up to 20 minutes. You have to take this test with an empty stomach, so you won't have any breakfast that day. You'll be able to get home again after the test, but you'll have to wait until the anaesthetic has worn off before you eat anything. 2. Mrs. Emma Sharp uh, because of your heavy periods, Mrs. Sharp, we must find out if you've become anemic. So I'll have to take a blood test. Oh, right. Uh, I think it will also be necessary for you to have a D&C done in hospital. We can probably do this as a day case. Good. It's a very simple procedure and just involves removing a small piece of the lining from inside the womb to find out why your periods have become so heavy. Mm -hmm. It'll also give us a better chance to examine you under the anaesthetic. It might also be necessary to do a pelvic ultrasonograph. This is a very simple test, which takes a special picture of the lower end of your abdomen to see if the womb is enlarged. 3. Miss Grace Donaldson From your symptoms, it would seem that you have an overactive thyroid gland. We can test this quite simply by doing a blood test to check the level of hormones in your blood. 4. Mr. Pritt Because you've been having this trouble with abdominal pain after fatty foods, I think you may have some stones in your gallbladder. You will need to have a special x-ray done. This is called a cholecystogram, and it will involve you taking some tablets before attending the x-ray department. They'll take an ordinary x-ray first, and then give you something fatty to eat, after which they'll take pictures of the gallbladder area to see if your gallbladder is working properly and if there are any stones present. They may also do an ultrasonograph. This is a way of examining your abdomen using a special machine which can show us pictures of your stomach and gallbladder using sound signals. It's not painful at all and it doesn't take more than five or ten minutes to perform. Five. Barry Scott. Mrs. Scott, I feel certain that Barry has German measles. Sometimes we do a blood test to prove this definitely, but because he is only two and a half, I am sure he wouldn't like to have a blood test done, and it would be safer to do nothing. 6. Mrs. Mary Locke. Mrs. Locke, I think it's possible that you have a condition called glaucoma which is caused by increased pressure inside the eye. In order to prove this, it will be necessary for you to have the pressure inside your eyes measured. We use a small instrument with a scale on it to measure the pressure. We'll put a few drops of local anaesthetic on your eye so you shouldn't feel anything. The test only takes a few seconds. Unit 5. Task 8. This is the haematology lab at the Royal. I have a result for you. Right. I'll just get a form. OK. It's for Mr Hall. Mr Kevin Hall. Right. White blood cells, 7.2. RBC, 3.32. Hemoglobin, 12.9. That's 12.9. Hematocrit, 0.39. MCV, 81. Platelets, 264. Sorry? 264. 264. Right. ESR, 43 millimetres. OK. I've got that. Blood film showed neutrophils 60%, lymphocytes 30%, monocytes 5%, eosinophils 4%, basophils 1%. Fine. Um, anything else on the film? Yes, there are Burr cells present, plus plus. Right. Thanks very much.
Unit 5. Task 16. Your father's condition is quite poor. It seems that he's had diarrhoea for six days, and this may have affected his diabetes. Mm. As you know, any infection can cause diabetes to get out of control. Uh, first, we have to check his blood sugar, kidney function, and level of salts. Because he's very dehydrated, we'll also be giving him some fluid. Uh -huh. He'll um, have an X-ray done of his chest and abdomen. And lastly, we'll be checking to see which particular germ caused his diarrhoea. Right. Unit 6. Task 7. Well, Mr Jameson, there's a nerve running behind your knee and your hip and through your spine. Uh-huh. Uh, when you lift your leg, that nerve should slide in and out of your spine quite freely. But with your leg, the nerve won't slide very far. When you lift it, the nerve gets trapped and it's very sore. When I bend your knee, that takes the tension off and eases the pain. If we straighten it, the nerve goes taut and it's very painful. I. Now, what is trapping the nerve? Well, your MRI scan confirms that you've got a damaged disc in the lower part of your back. Oh, I see. The disc is a little pad of gristle which lies between the bones in your spine. Now, if you lift heavy loads in the wrong way, you can damage it. And that's what's happened to you. You've damaged a disc. It's pressing on a nerve in your spine so that it can't slide freely, and that's the cause of these pains you've been having. Uh-huh. Now, we're going to try to solve the problem, first of all, with a maximum of 24 hours bed rest and with strong painkillers so that you'll be able to get moving again as soon as possible. Bed rest for too long can make things worse. We'll also give you some physio to ease your leg and back. I can't promise this will be entirely successful and we may have to consider an operation at a later date. Unit 6, Task 10. 1. A 33-year-old salesman suffering from a duodenal ulcer. Uh, your stomach has been producing too much acid. Oh. This has inflamed an area in your bowel. It's possible that your stressful job has aggravated the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, this is quite a common condition and there is an effective treatment. It doesn't involve surgery. 2. A six-year-old boy with Perth's disease, accompanied by his parents. What's happened to your son's hip mm -hmm. is uh, caused by a disturbance of the blood supply to the growing bone. Um, this causes the bone to soften. Uh, when he walks, it, it puts pressure on the bone oh. and it changes shape. It's painful and he limps. Th this problem isn't uncommon with young boys and if we treat it now, it won't cause any permanent damage. Oh. 3. A 21-year-old professional footballer with a torn meniscus of the right knee. The cartilage, which is the cushioning tissue between the bones of your knee, has torn when your knee was twisting. Right. We need to do some further tests, an MRI scan and possibly an arthroscopy. Sorry. Uh... Well, that means looking into the joint with a kind of telescope. Oh. If there is torn cartilage, we can remove it then. Well, footballers often get this kind of problem, and with treatment and physio, you will be able to play again. All right. Four. A 43-year-old teacher with fibroids. Uh, well, your heavy periods are caused by a condition known as fibroids. Ah. Fibroids are a type of growth in the womb. They're not related to cancer, right. and they're quite common. Mm -hmm. When you get to the change of life, they may become smaller and cause you no trouble, but at your age, and because the bleeding has made you anemic, the best treatment is an operation. Oh. 
Five, an 82-year-old retired nurse suffering from dementia, accompanied by her son and daughter. Your mother is in the early stages of dementia, which is a condition of the brain in older people which causes loss of memory, particularly recent memory. Mm. Uh, sometimes people with dementia also have delusions. Yes. Um, her personality may change. For example, she may become rude or aggressive. Her mood may become very up and down. Mm. At this stage, she can stay at home with some help, but her condition will deteriorate and she will need to go into care in the long term. Six. A two-week-old baby with tetralogy of fallow, accompanied by her parents. Your baby has a heart condition which developed when she was growing in the womb. Some babies with this condition are born looking blue, but it's also possible for the blueness to develop after a few weeks. Oh. The blood flow in the heart becomes abnormal, and mm -hmm. this causes your baby to grunt and have difficulty in feeding. Fortunately, there is an operation for this condition which is very successful. Oh. It's extremely likely your baby will go on to lead a normal life. 7. A 35-year-old receptionist suffering from hypothyroidism. The cause of your problem is your thyroid gland, which is situated here in your neck. The hormones from this gland affect all areas of your body. If the gland isn't working properly, many things can go wrong. For example, it can cause weight gain and hair loss. Oh. This is a common condition and the treatment is simple. Good. Unit 6, Task 13. We've operated on your father and discovered that he'd had a blockage of the blood supply to his small bowel. This caused the small bowel to become gangrenous and it had to be removed. He'll be able to manage without it, but it is a fairly major operation and naturally his condition is serious. Now, the blockage of blood supply caused his diarrhoea and because of the diarrhoea, his diabetes went out of control as he lost so much fluid and salts from his body. And that explains why he went into a coma.